Hey, deserving listeners, Chris and Paige, Married at First Sight, let's watch. I mean, he very clearly does not want us in your marriage in any way, shape, or form, which is fine if that's how you feel too, but you know at the end of the day, we're here for anything you need. If you need a vent, if you need us to help you with literally anything, like, we got you, like. You don't need to worry about y'all own yo. I'm very that's disrespect. My... Y'all talking but to I'm... my yeah. wife right, y'all yeah. talking to my wife right now. Okay. Some of the cast members went to Chris and were asking him, what was going on, he was being a little defensive, they were giving him unsolicited advice. It was, you know, not terrible. And Chris said he didn't appreciate it. And, you know, I think that the other cast members handled it fine. They were just like, okay, fine, You, I guess you don't want our advice. Uh, we're trying to help you out and we're concerned about your situation that you just found out that you have a child with another uh, woman and we're just we're worried for Paige and we're coming to you just to see if we can have a conversation about that. He pushed back, which, you know, I think is fine. He, and his main thesis was, I don't want your unsolicited advice. I don't care about your concern. Get out. Get out of my business. I'm, I'm, I'm handling it. You, I don't need you to tell me what to do. He came off uh, aggressive, not terribly, but, you know, a little over over uh, angry or something. But I think for the most part, it was a justifiable conversation. They were concerned, maybe crossing some boundaries. He was pushing back. Okay. And, but he's having a hard time letting it go. I guess everyone's having a hard time letting it go. The, the other cast members go to Paige. They say, we're really uh, concerned about you. Basically implying, we think Chris is a piece of work. If you, and they're saying, if you, if you need anyone to vent to, come to me, essentially saying, I'm sure you're going to have a problem with him, so feel free to come to me as an ally against him. It's not exactly what they're saying, obviously. It's not verbatim, but it's kind of the gist. And Chris is, I think, understandably uh, hurt by that and angry. He feels ostracized and targeted. It's fine. But we're seeing... a. Uh, uh, an element of his personality. I don't know what we're seeing in the other cast members precisely. I think we could uh, discuss that a little bit, but at the very least, I think for Chris, we're seeing some level of hostility from him, a, a quickness to hostility that uh, comes from a, usually a place of threat. When people are hostile, it's almost with others, especially in a situation like this, it's almost always the result of feeling threatened somehow. Either your integrity is threatened or your body is threatened or your possessions are threatened or your relationships are threatened or something's going on. And uh, I'm guessing he feels threatened because the other cast members seem to be critical of him and seem to be making assumptions about him. And this has been kind of building up for a while. I didn't show the other scenes, but there's been some tension when they're all in a big group. And Chris has shown that he has a really hard time with communicating in a differentiated, mature way. He has a really tough time with emotions. And the model that I often use, really with everyone, including myself, is when we're under stress, what age do we regress to? And for him, he seems frequently stressed out and often regresses to uh, different age groups of, of his persona. Right now, I think he is kind of like a 13-year-old, 14-year-old. That's how they often talk, maybe a 16-year-old. Um, and other times I think he's regressed even younger. I suspect that he has at least sufficient relational traumas that makes it hard for him to see through the situation in a calm way, in a way that meets his goals. Because I think from his uh, statements, his seeming his goal is to make things work with Paige. He obviously has some uh, discombobulation now that he just found out that he's going to be a father. So, uh, but I think he's trying to live a good life. I think he's trying to get his needs met. And I think part of that is to have a good relationship with, with Paige, but he is kind of shooting himself in the foot right now by coming out strong because I'm guessing Paige is going to look at him and say, why is he doing that? So why do people shoot themselves in the foot in a situation like that? Well, usually because... Um, uh, you know, when we get triggered, either a past trauma. So in summary, <laughs> my hypothesis, I'm adding one here, 
that I think Chris has been threatened often, maybe not physically, but some kind of threat to his integrity, some kind of threat to his honor or something, maybe from his parents when he was young. Um, and, and that can happen. You know, parents can, can threaten their children, not in an obvious way, like parents who will criticize a lot and will say, you're doing it wrong, or your behavior is wrong. And not only your behavior, but you are wrong. Well, that's a threat to your integrity. Even if you're just four years old, it's still a threat to you. And if you repeat that enough times, then you might have a very sensitive spot when it comes to other people threatening your integrity. It, it kind of looks like that. I don't know. Let's continue watching. you are talking to my wife right now, yo. They are friends. They not friends. Um, okay. Calm down, man. It's okay, dude. Just relax, yo, all right? Yo, you, you want to continue to talk to me or you want to come? Let's go. Let's just chill. Yeah, because I'm going to explode on somebody. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going to just so it was a pretty smart move of Paige, really. Uh, she's taking a safer road of, okay, l- let's let's I'll go with you. Let's you know let's separate so that this won't come to violence because it kind of looked like it was headed in that direction. Now this guy, he you know I haven't been reacting to him. He has um, something about his communication is odd to me. He has a, um, I don't know, an awkwardness to him <laughs> that I don't think is pathological, but it's, it's notable, and I think it contributes to some of him, uh, his behavior. I think he often puts his foot in his mouth. That's, that's a good way of putting it. And I don't think him, the way he puts his foot in his mouth, mixes very well with Chris. Hey! Now we got it. I don't give a I don't give a I don't give a I don't give a all right. I've asked you several times. This is enough. This is enough. I've asked you several times. Okay. So he seems to be having another meltdown. When you look at the behavior, he's an adult saying adult words and adult sentences in an adult manner, I guess. But when you think more fundamentally about the emotional state that he's in right now, it seems like that of a temper tantrum or a meltdown or a escalation in one's emotions where you are out of control. And that can happen from traumatic events, from relational traumas. Your uh, body gets uh, feels attacked. You go into fight or flight. You have adrenaline. You don't think straight. You interpret things in a certain way, and, you, and then you come out strong because you're misinterpreting things. And I think what was happening was they got in the van. They're driving away. And the other cast members, they just weren't saying anything, and he, Chris, continued. Now, Paige is trying to get Chris to stop, and Chris feels like he needs to continue with the hostility. I think uh, now, now we're starting to look at possible traumas around being bullied or being put down a lot or overpowered somehow. And uh, we've seen this in other shows that I watch, like 90 Day Fiance with Angela, uh, she will have this kind of arousal in terms of fight or flight and then coming out strong, seemingly, who knows, I'd have to ask them, as a way of preempting any kind of threat to themselves. There are people that learn early on in life that unless, like, as soon as I detect even the slightest of threat, I need to come out strong and bully the other person, otherwise they're going to bully me. Your actions and... Um one of the things that I was, you know, stressing about all week was just, yo, I just need privacy because the wound is just so fresh, you know what I'm saying, that it's, 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 it's a touchy subject. Okay, so good. He is taking responsibility for his behavior. Uh, he's apologizing, kind of. He is providing an explanation that it's a touchy subject and he wants his privacy. I think it's definitely in the right direction. I didn't expect him to say that. That's good. He's it's so we're looking at now a situation where he is easily triggered and then his fight or flight freeze appease and faint goes off. He sees red, he gets hostile, he um can't back down and then when he calms down, he regrets it and now he's apologizing. 
It's interesting because the last time you asked me to watch Married at First Sight, it was season, was it season 10? And there was that one couple, oh, what was their what was their name? But a similar situation where the husband, I thought, w- was easily triggered, you know, when the cameras were getting in his face. And he'd come out real strong, and then later on he would seemingly regret it. I, we, I think we're looking at a similar situation. I'm not sure, though. Also, um, I just want to apologize to um, Ryan and Clara uh, for earlier when you don't have a relationship with somebody and you feel attacked, it's basically an outsider intruding in, and that's how I felt. Um, So I owe you an apology. Okay, good. So he is saying that he didn't have a relationship with them and felt like it was an outsider intruding in. And he is essentially acknowledging that that was an unfair evaluation since... Uh, Paige is friends with with her and he's apologized for that. So that's great. This is, you know, who knows where this heads, where this ends up. I'm guessing the conflict gets worse since y'all asked me to watch it. But I will point out functional and differentiated behavior. He's seemingly genuine in his apology. It's good. For me, I I really appreciate that. I don't think any of it was handled well on any of our part. Um, I appreciate the apology and I apologize as well for disrespecting y'all in any way um, and hopefully we can put it in the past and just keep supporting each other from here on out yeah and whatever you guys need like double apology two thumbs up that's great so she is being gracious we've seen other shows or maybe even other cast members on this show who wouldn't um, react in that sort of way uh, they're being gracious about it they're being nice about it they are understanding, receiving the apology well. So this is good. We're looking at a mutual apology that will, you know, perhaps put this behind them. The, the, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the other couple, though, because I think he is gearing up for that. Actually, right now, Chris, you mind if I say something real quick? Sure. Um, so obviously some stuff went down today, man. Um, but I have to just let you know we need to establish some boundaries with what happened. So... I can't allow you to ever talk to her like that again. Okay, (laughs) so I don't know if you saw this, but that couple was late, they said as usual, and they weren't there to benefit from Chris's sincere apology and to have everyone getting along. And then he sits down. It, It makes sense. He is saying, look, don't talk to us like that ever again which is completely justifiable. I didn't show all the clips, but Chris was being completely out of line towards them, completely, 100%, especially after they, after these two moved away. He con- pursued, they got in the van. He continued to uh, be aggressive verbally and scary, really. I mean, it, it'd be frightening. And uh, he sits down and totally justified. Given the way <laughs> that... Uh, Chris is. I wonder how he's going to receive this. Uh, I, let's let's find out. Can we pause really quick? Because yeah. I, I want to make sure before I, I appreciate you, Eric, for what you're about to say in the sense of I think you want to settle everything. Yeah. I will tell you before you got here, Chris was apologetic towards everybody. So I don't want I don't want y'all to build something. Sure. And Great. We wouldn't see this normally on these sorts of shows where someone is actually triangulating in a functional way he's actually trying to help them to resolve it and this might actually work this is this this is exactly what i would have done if i were at that table whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. dude you weren't here he was apologizing big time so maybe you should consider that that you weren't here when he was being very apologetic so but at the same time uh he needs chris needs to apologize to them too Uh, he was particularly them, really. He was completely out of line, super aggressive. And the other couple was saying, I mean, the other couple's a little awkward and they get intoxicated sometimes and put their foot in their mouth, but they they weren't being aggressive. They weren't being hostile. They weren't being um, threatening in any kind of way. And, And Chris, I don't know if Chris was being threatening, but he was definitely being over the top hostile. All right. Well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.